On February 23, 1963, a gathering was held in Ghana to celebrate African-American intellectual and Pan-Africanist W.E.B. Du Bois' 95th birthday and his recent Ghanaian citizenship. Two years prior, Du Bois had traveled to Ghana at the behest of the Ghanaian president Kwame Nkrumah to lead a special research project, the Africana Encyclopedia. In Du Bois' own words, An encyclopedia, not on the vague subject of race, but on the peoples inhabiting the continent of Africa. Soon after traveling to Ghana in 1961, the elderly Du Bois became ill and decided to celebrate Ghana and its dedication to Pan-Africanism by becoming a Ghanaian citizen and spending the last days of his life in the country. As the celebration of Du Bois' birthday and citizenship came to a close, President Nkrumah turned to leave the festivities but was stopped by the elderly Du Bois. Du Bois reached for his hand and held it tightly. He thanked Kwame Nkrumah for making it possible for him to finish his life in Africa. The first president of the Republic of Ghana took his leave in tears. W.E.B. Du Bois passed away later that year. At first glance, the relationship Du Bois and President Nkrumah shared appears deceptively simple to classify and describe. In Du Bois, Nkrumah found a brilliant intellectual and African civil rights activist responsible for the sustainment of positive ideas regarding civil rights, decolonization, and pan-Africanism, which is the social and political unity of all African natives. In Nkrumah, Du Bois saw a passionate African political leader capable of implementing radical pan-Africanist and socialist ideals. While the men did not meet until the 5th Annual Pan-African Conference in 1945, the writings of the much older Du Bois and those of other key 20th century pan-Africanists had already helped to inspire Nkrumah. In the mid-1950s, Nkrumah would successfully implement pan-Africanist ideas when forming the Independent Republic of Ghana. Unfortunately, Discussing the particulars of their relationship beyond this simplistic classification is difficult. The main focus of writings on Du Bois' time in Ghana, when he would have primarily interacted with Nkrumah, is on the development of the Africana Encyclopedia project. Similarly, writings on the formative years of Nkrumah's government when Du Bois was still alive focus on Nkrumah's politics and his interactions with the Ghanaian government and people. Nonetheless, this video will analyze the relationship W.E.B. Du Bois shared with Kwame Nkrumah. To provide necessary context for the study of their interaction, an introduction to the subjects of this study must first be provided. W.E.B. Du Bois was an overlooked American intellectual. His social, historical, and intellectual contributions were immense. His lifetime of progressive work and accomplishments included co-founding the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, debunking the racist and historically inaccurate teachings on the Reconstruction Era that the Dunning School popularized, becoming the first African-American professor at Atlanta University, expertly and poetically defining the African struggle in the souls of black folk, and participating in the American Civil Rights Movement. Du Bois was passionate about his work and remained dedicated until his old age, working on the Africana Encyclopedia until he died at 95 years old. He spent nearly a century continuously pursuing academic enlightenment and working as an activist, only for many of his contributions to be ignored because of his race and impartiality to socialist ideals. He passed away on August 27, 1963, a day before Martin Luther King Jr.'s historic march on Washington, D.C. Before King gave his speech at the Lincoln Memorial, Du Bois' death was announced to the gathered crowd. Inspired by his study of Pan-Africanists at school, including Du Bois, the far younger Kwame Nkrumah led a life of activism, pursuing the end to British imperialism in Ghana, and eventually gaining control of the Ghanaian government in 1952. He achieved this goal through the support of the political party he helped to create, the Convention People's Party, which remained loyal to Nkrumah even while he was imprisoned by British officials for his pan-Africanist and anti-imperialist politics and his organized boycotts. Under Nkrumah's leadership, Ghana quickly gained political allies in the democratic capitalist West, including the United States, and among communist Eastern countries such as the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China. Nkrumah's reliance on foreign power and money to economically develop Ghana resulted in a deep national debt, even though it was immediately beneficial to Ghana's prosperity. 
By the mid-1960s, inflation and high taxes created harsh circumstances for the Ghanaian people, including members of the military. In addition to financial troubles, Nkrumah's allies in the West had begun conspiring against him, as few Western nations favored his Pan-Africanist ideals. In 1966, three years after the death of Du Bois, while Nkrumah was abroad, the military led a coup and took control of Ghana. Nkrumah fled to the Republic of Guinea. Nkrumah never involved himself in politics again, but remained committed to the social implementation of Pan-Africanist ideals. In 1945, Du Bois and Nkrumah were delegates during the 5th Pan-Africanist Conference. This event not only served as the men's first meeting, but it was also one of the most important early conferences in the Pan-Africanist movement. The primary goal of the conference was to properly organize Pan-Africanists from all attending nations into political parties that could more easily advocate for African rights and the decolonization of Africa. Unfortunately, the interaction between the two men was so brief, Nkrumah had to reintroduce himself to Du Bois at a later Pan-Africanist meeting. The relationship between Du Bois and Nkrumah remained largely underdeveloped. However, the two men continued to develop respect for one another from afar, as both were powerful writers within their intellectual community of Pan-Africanists. When Nkrumah helped to create the first independent African nation in Ghana, Du Bois and other Pan-Africanists were overjoyed. Nkrumah's accomplishments represented the culmination of Pan-Africanist goals. A modern and free African nation controlled by Africans for the benefit of Africans. Dear Dr. Du Bois, I have heard with particular pleasure the news that you have accepted our invitation to attend the celebrations connected with the establishment of the Republic of Ghana. I shall have many things to talk over with you, and I should like you to know that whilst you are in Ghana, you and your wife will be my personal private guests. I sincerely hope that you are enjoying very good health and that you are looking forward to this visit to Ghana with as much pleasurable anticipation as I and your many friends are. Yours very sincerely, Kwame Nkrumah. In the mid-1950s, when Du Bois was nearing 90 years of age, Nkrumah reached out to Du Bois, requesting he attend the festivities related to Ghana's independence. After Du Bois arrived in Ghana, Nkrumah approached Du Bois, requesting that he head a new research project about the history of the African race, the Africana Encyclopedia. The project began as an adaptation of a previously uncompleted project of Du Bois that focused on the history of Africa. Under Nkrumah's eye, the project evolved. The encyclopedia hopes to eliminate the artificial boundaries created by this continent by colonial masters. Design nations such as Britain Africa, French Africa, Black Africa, and Islamic Africa too often serve to keep alive differences which in large part have been imposed on Africans by outsiders. Rather than needlessly classify Africa by the various European countries and religions that continued to dominate the continent, Du Bois and Nkrumah desired to represent a unified Africa. Du Bois continued to work on the Africana Encyclopedia with Nkrumah's support until he became ill. As his health failed him, Du Bois spent the last months of his life content in Ghana, witnessing the result of nearly a century of pan-African activism as enacted by Kwame Nkrumah. The kinship and respect between Du Bois and Nkrumah is clear in their written exchanges with each other regarding the Africana Encyclopedia and the reverent manner in which they address each other, especially as Du Bois's health declined. In Du Bois, Nkrumah found a brilliant intellectual capable of supporting and celebrating Pan-Africanism through the newly independent Ghana. In Ghana, Dr. Du Bois received all the honors and considerations which had been denied him in his own country. Du Bois found appreciation in Ghana and an opportunity to continue studying and working for social growth after his departure from the United States. In Nkrumah specifically, Du Bois found a like-minded individual who was politically unafraid and dedicated to the ideals of Pan-Africanism. Upon the death of Du Bois, Nkrumah addressed Ghana on the radio, describing Du Bois as not only a father figure and a legend in the field of Pan-Africanism, but also as a friend. Dr. Du Bois is a phenomenon. May he rest in peace. 